is Dr. Clayton Lane. In this video, I'll be discussing the subchondroplasty procedure. In order to understand the subchondroplasty procedure, it's important to first understand a little bit about the progression of arthritis. Here we see on the left an arthroscopic picture of the inside of the knee. This is the medial femoral condyle, and this white, uh, shiny substance is the cartilage lining the joint, and this is a normal, healthy knee. You can see the uh, corresponding MRI. This is also the medial femoral condyle. The highlighted area here is the cartilage layer that lines the bone. So the bone lies underneath here, and here's the cartilage that you're seeing in this arthroscopic picture. Now in contrast to that, here is a knee that's severely arthritic. Here the white cartilage is gone, and you have a more yellowish brown bone, which is exposed, and this is bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. Now this arthritis is fairly severe, and there's really no definitive treatment for this type of arthritis other than a knee replacement. What we're talking about with the subchondroplasty procedure, however, is an in-between patient. Here's a patient that on arthroscopy also has healthy, white, smooth cartilage surfaces lining the joint of the medial femoral condyle and the tibial plateau. But on the MRI, we see that something's not quite normal in the bone. Here, this white area is called bone marrow edema. While the cartilage, the white lining here, is well preserved, the bone has become abnormal. Now this patient is an ideal candidate for the subchondroplasty procedure because the theory behind the procedure is that if we inject a biologic bone cement into this area of bone marrow edema, then we can support it and prolong the amount of time that it takes to get from here to severe arthritis, which would require a knee replacement. Here's our case example for today, a 60-year-old distance runner with persistent pain on the inside of the knee. It's gotten to the point where she can't run anymore because of the pain, and it's severely affecting her lifestyle. On x-ray, however, she doesn't have arthritis of any significance. Maybe some mild narrowing here on the standing view, but we could predict from this x-ray that she's going to have good cartilage inside the knee. The MRI confirms that, and what the MRI also picks up, this is the image that I showed you previously, is that bone marrow edema in the medial femoral condyle. And here you can see a more frontal view, and again on the inside of the knee, exactly where she has pain, she has this white area of bone marrow edema. She also has a little bit on the tibial plateau seen here, but again that's in contrast to on the outside of the knee where she does not hurt. And again, here's that arthroscopic photo showing that, yes, uh, intraoperatively she did have good cartilage uh, covering the bone of the medial femoral condyle and the tibial plateau. And therefore, it's the bone marrow edema deep to this cartilage that's likely causing her pain. A second case example, slightly different, 68-year-old farmer with long-term low-grade pain in the knee suddenly got worse when he stepped off of a ladder. Here we see an x-ray which shows he does have some mild thinning of the cartilage, but again, no severe arthritis, and more notably, no fracture as you would expect with the type of sudden sharp pain that he experienced. On MRI, however, we do see a fracture which is indicated by this squiggly gray line here. It's a non-displaced fracture uh, deep to the cartilage surfaces again, and this also can be treated effectively with subchondroplasty procedure. In the subchondroplasty procedure, what we do is identify the areas of bone marrow edema on our preoperative MRI, and then use a template in order to intraoperatively target that site and insert a cannula, which will allow us to insert that biologic cement that I spoke of previously and support this area of bone marrow edema and reduce the pain. Here we have an animation showing the operative setup for a subchondroplasty procedure. You see the x-ray machine in the background is used to localize the bony landmarks and when they will draw out on the skin surface those are anatomic landmarks and bring our subchondroplasty jig uh, into the field. Here you see some live footage of that exact same technique. We have the jig and I'm manipulating it under direct x-ray guidance until I get it into the appropriate position and there you can see our 
x-ray image in the background and my targeting device. Once I'm happy that I have it lined up with the anatomical landmarks, then I'll pin it into place. That guide now is going to allow me to target the site of bone marrow edema, which we have predetermined on our MRI templating preoperative. And see if we determined the B2 slot was the appropriate slot, that would direct us uh, directly into the area of the bone marrow edema. I also am able to measure exactly how deep to put that pin so it's spot on accurate. Once our trocar is in place, we remove that jig and insert a cannula, again directly into the site of the bone marrow edema. And here you'll see a live surgery video of that. My trocar is in place, again all placed under direct fluoroscopic or x-ray guidance. And now I'm inserting that cannula easily into the bone of the tibia in this case and targeting the site of bone marrow edema and this is actually the patient with the stress fracture so we're targeting that fracture of the tibial plateau. X-ray is used several times to confirm that the appropriate depth and location is achieved once again prior to injecting the cement. There you can see the small incisions that are used for this procedure and the three-dimensional orientation of where we put that cannula. And then finally, once we're very happy with our position, the calcium phosphate substance is injected into the knee. And you can see in the animation that going into place in the bone. Several cc's of calcium phosphate cement are used and then the fairly small incisions are closed up and the post-op rehabilitation begins. Here again we have our case example. Here we see her preoperative x-rays and MRI again showing the bone marrow edema of the medial femoral condyle as well as the tibial plateau. And here you can see on our post-operative x-ray how we've effectively targeted and filled those areas with calcium phosphate, which is this brighter white material here and here, as compared to what you see on the other side of the knee. And here's our other case example. Again, his x-ray shows no fracture. The MRI did, however, show a non-displaced fracture. And with this acute on chronic type of pain, we suspect he had a stress fracture. His post-operative x-rays, again you see we were able to target that area of stress fracture, inject the calcium phosphate, and in his case he had some dramatic results. In fact, he was able to weight bear immediately after the surgery and at four to six weeks had no pain in the knee, which is a drastic difference from what we typically see in the tibial plateau fracture shown here. Mm -hmm.